Today we will continue on the PA systems. So yesterday we did the PA systems part one, and today we're going to uh, we're going to continue with the PA systems, public address systems part two. Okay, and that will that will conclude the well. If I want to talk about PA systems, I have done them over the years, uh, designed, installed, serviced, uh, all kinds of things with that. Different scenarios. Uh, just a stage, uh, rock and roll stage, or uh, or, or uh, regular speed kind of a conference systems, uh, church systems. It's a very popular field, uh, and there is money to be made um, because churches do need sound systems. And if you uh, if you make yourself known as doing a good job, then you will be as busy as you want, right? Uh, as far as uh, installing those type of systems, right? theater, uh, gyms, arenas. Uh, uh, outside events, portable, permanent installations. There's so much stuff to learn, so much stuff to do, and, and so much stuff to be to, to get experience on that you can do it for the rest of your life and still not know everything. Okay, but it's it's a fun field to uh, to deal with. If you can get into it, more power to you. Right? I'm giving you the kind of a tasting platter of what you might expect uh, uh, when if you decide to, uh, or if you have that. Uh, Thing in you because you know not everything is for everybody. Some people would like the sound systems, some people would like the uh, other audiovisual uh, field, um, uh, some people will like the uh, data installations, running cables, connecting the networks. Uh, sometimes you will uh, you will get a job installing security alarms. Uh, sometimes you'll get a job installing security cameras, uh, fire alarms. Uh, wherever you can get the job and you feel good about it and it resonates with you. I'm giving you the heads up. I've gone pretty much over the last 30 years. I've gone through all of those stages. Neuroscall systems as well. That's uh, that's another thing. Uh, <clears throat> Neuroscall systems are the ones, uh, are the systems that uh, if somebody is in the hospital, uh, they will have that little uh, something that's called a call bell, like a little thing to press if you if they feel I don't know uh, they need to call the nurse. They press the button and uh, things are triggered in the. Uh, Reception desk and so so that's that these are called nurse call systems school PA systems and all that stuff telephone systems Wow, it's the, the whole thing this whole telecommunications field is a beautiful field now There's a new part uh, which we will uh, deal with also. It's the fiber optics Okay, well, but now we're going to finish the uh, PA systems part two All right Just want to make sure that we are recording. Yes, we are okay good Let's get this thing going here. PA systems, part two. All right. I'm just uh, doing control L for full screen on that. Yeah, look at that. Sparkles. All right. Uh, PA systems, public address systems. So these are more like uh, different scenarios I'm going to give you uh, as far as the elements of the of the public address systems. This is a stage being built. So sometimes you're going to deal with the small systems. Uh, you're just going to roll in a couple of speakers, uh, uh, MP3 player, or some of your DJ equipment. Get some headphones, and yeah, you know, uh, you'll be fine. Um, uh, but sometimes uh, when it gets really high class professional, then uh, uh, this is actually a portable stage. It's a construction site, pretty much. Eh? Uh, now I got this picture out, out of internet. This is uh, out of, uh, this is from my home country, Poland, uh, and this is a picture of something that is uh, a place that's called Zakopane, and it's in a mountain area, uh, and uh, that's the setup for the New Year's Eve. All right, uh, uh, it's a pretty uh, pretty cool event, if you ask me. All right, so that's how. The stage looks like when it's being set up. Uh, I think they're setting it up a month before. Uh, and then this here, it looks like uh, uh, when this thing is all set up. So that's uh, that's in the uh, that's when things are going. All right. So from this, uh, this thing is slow transition. From this to this, uh, and there's a whole technical rider for every kind of a performance. Technical rider is. A document presented by the management of the artist uh, that uh, specifies all the requirements by the technical crew it has to be studied by the tech crew and uh, the, and the, all the items that need to be provided uh, they just everybody needs to make sure that things are there and it goes from anywhere from uh, 
uh, asking to supply certain type of equipment uh, that is supposed to be on stage, certain type of lighting, certain type of sound system or whatnot, to sometimes even ridiculous things that uh, the artist, uh, if they can afford that kind of a provocation, uh, the artist requests that their, uh, their, their, their change room is painted blue, all right? And there is a table and there is a, uh, there's, there's a red rose on the table and a coffee. You know, sometimes they do that just to make sure that whoever receives that, just to make sure that they read everything, right? So, uh, you know, that's called a technical writer. It's a, it's a pretty huge undertaking, okay? So we're going to take some of that stuff apart here, right? Eh? So uh, PA system, live performance, these are the basic things. Now, uh, what I'm going to uh, mention to you that um, the systems, the sound systems or the PA systems still are divided basically right now into analog and digital. The digital systems are taking over uh, with huge steps. So uh, I'm pretty sure that the, um, some of the good old analog systems are if not already, are going to be a little bit uh, pushed out by the digital, which is pretty much the same, except analog is analog and digital is digital. Mm, it's just a transfer of a signal, different cabling used and stuff like that. So we'll go over some of that. Now, just to make sure that uh, you understand the concept of the stage setup, I'm going to, uh, we're going to go uh, and analyze some of that. So here is the mixing board. All right, the, uh, the, the mixing console, that's where all the inputs are coming in from the stage, right? Where are the inputs are going or coming from? They're coming from this little box here. And in this case, it's called a stage box, right? The stage box is right on the stage. The mixing board is usually in the, something that's called the front of the house. That's where the public seats are, right? Just so the sound engineers have a good perception of what the sound is uh, that the public is hearing. So you're going to see a lot of that. Uh, somewhere in the middle of the public seats, uh, there's going to be a, a stand with the sound equipment and the people mixing it. Uh, now, the stage box is connected with the mixing board through something that's called a snake or in this case here is a multi-core cable. Now, in analog system, there is a, the snake is a, a trunk cable or a cable that consists many uh, cables inside it, right? Just to uh, contain everything in one big cable. So if it's a 12 channel snake, it's going to cons consist of 12 channels, 12 cables that are connected from here, and they are just basically fanned out here. It's just, they're just basically just hanging, and then you need to plug them in, and they are numbered, one, two, three, four, and whatever, to 12. There could be 16 channel snake, there could be 24 channel snake, all right? And you're going to plug them into the inputs, just so you don't have to run all the wires one by one from the, from the front of the house to the stage. So it's just for, for the convenience. That's the analog way. Now, so for example, uh, there could be a 12 and four, uh, 12 by four. So it would be 12 channels that are going from the box into here, into the, into the mixing board and for four returns. Okay. So there would be a, there will be a female jack here, 12 female jacks in order to plug in the equipment. And on the other side, there will be 12 male jacks. So those can be plugged in to the female jacks on the mixing board. Okay? Now the mixing board also has outputs. So it can send the signal back to the stage, back to this stage box, and these are called returns, right? So this would be, um, uh, so the output of the, uh, of the mixing board would have the analog uh, male uh, configuration. And instead of these cables having female jacks on the end, this would be uh, male jacks on the end here, because they're going this way. Uh, these are going to be female jacks going that way, right? Why is this thing that way? Because you're getting the sound from all the instruments one by one, so you can adjust the levels and combine them into one output or couple outputs or maybe three or four outputs, but they are, they are having those mixes, it's so-called mixes, all right? So let's say the front of the house, the front of the house mix is going to be in a stereo configuration, or sometimes stereo doesn't work in the, the big room. So usually it will be a mono signal, 
but let's just say it's a room small enough to accommodate the stereo so the stereo actually works okay uh, so there will be two channels uh, and those two channels are going to be going through the return channels on the snake back to the stage box right? and from the stage box they're going to go into the amplifiers right? could be a crossover amplifier and so on but let's say just go to amplification systems and the amplifiers are going to be connected to the speakers that are powering up the front of the house with the sound okay why do we do it this way can we just have a bunch of amplifiers here well we can't uh, do i have my phone i just want to make sure that i don't have my phone in my pocket somewhere so uh, the sound doesn't uh so when the phone works uh, there's some interference uh, if you feel, if you hear some uh, some buzzing or something like that, sometimes I leave my phone in my pocket. All right. Uh, all right. Um, <clears throat> so just let me know. All right. So uh, could we put some amplifier? Could we put the amplifiers right here? Yes, we could. But just think about that. All right. Uh, the speakers or the loudspeakers, um, their impedance is anywhere from well, it could be eight ohms speakers. Or some of the more powerful ones, they have four ohm speakers, eight ohms or four ohms. Uh, the idea is that uh, the impedance of the of the amplifier output matches the impedance of the speaker. If those are matched, then uh, there is something that's called a maximum power transfer. Now, if this is a hundred feet, okay, and this is a four ohm speaker. If you got cable, even if you can get thick cable, you're still going to get maybe half an ohm or maybe one ohm or something like that, just in the wire, right? So there's already an impedance mismatch because some of the power that is supposed to get to the speakers is going to be dissipated in the cable. Right? The cable is going to warm up a little bit, right? Uh, or it's going to be shut back right to the amplifier. So here's the, you know, uh, and uh, the amplifier is going to be uh, getting warm. Right? So the idea is to place the amplifiers as close to the speakers as possible. So usually you're going to have the amplifiers placed on the stage. So the distance between the amplifier output and the speaker is the shortest possible that we can get. Right? Right? So, uh, so that's, uh, that's, that's why we, we do it that way. All right, what else do we have connected to the stage box? Well, in this case, we have a microphone for the vocals and we have a guitar um, that is going to something. It looks like DL, but no, it's a DI, uh, direct input box or direct box. Right. What, uh, what does that do? It's, um, it is converting uh, something that's called an unbalanced signal coming up from the guitar and it's converting to a balanced signal that is going to be connected to the stage box and from the stage box through the snake is going to be connected to one of the inputs of the of the uh, mixing board and i'm going to stop for a second a little bit here and i'm going to display explain to you what is the difference between the balanced signal and an unbalanced signal right? uh, well if we have a cable that is supposed to transfer a signal so here is the maybe the positive side, and here is the uh, common or ground side of it. Okay, so the signal is being transferred onto from from something that outputs the signal to something that is going to receive the signal. All right, whatever the device might be here. Okay. Well, um, just think about it. The signal just on this cable here is going to be like this right it's just a sine wave now when this cable is long enough the signal is going to be weaker and weaker because cables or conductors or wires do have some sort of resistance it's a small resistance but if you stretch it out to be a long long cable that small resistance is going to add up to something bigger so it's going to attenuate the signal attenuation um, Attenuation is uh, basically uh, 
uh, signal getting smaller, right? degrading the signal in as far as power goes. So of course, the longer the distance, uh, the quieter the signal is going to be. Same as I'm standing right beside you, I'm going to talk with my normal voice, you're going to hear me. But if you're standing 100 meters or 100 yards away from me, if I talk with my normal voice, you're going to have a hard time hearing what I'm saying, right? So I have to speak louder. So that's the same thing here. Uh, so uh, so when, uh, uh, when the signal is getting, getting uh, over the distance, it's going to get smaller, right? Or quieter. Now, the other thing is if the signal is not strong enough, any kind of interference, like for example, um, if a Volkswagen drives by, right? That was uh, the joke of my electronics professor years ago. Right? Uh, then you're going to have a spark. If there's a lightning somewhere there, or if somebody turns on some heavy equipment, there's going to be a spike. That spike, or maybe there's another spike here, maybe there's another spike here. Those spikes are going to be also received. Or if there is some sort of a noise, that is going to, so that noise is also going to be heard. Right? So for the unbalanced signal, you need to have a strong signal. So the unbalanced signal is going to be common for something that is called line level. Line level signal. And line level signal, it would be somewhere in the area of one volt peak to peak. Peak to peak. Right? So that would be a line level. Line level com signal comes out of active devices such as electronic keyboard, MP3 player, CD player, anything that is that you can turn on uh, is capable of providing a line level signal. So if the signal is strong enough, you can get away maybe up to 100 feet or so, and uh, you should be safe with that. All right. So um, uh, when uh, <clears throat> oh, it's getting darker outside. Uh, so when, um, uh, when we have the signal strong enough, yes, we can use something that is unbalanced. But if you have a signal from passive devices, such as a passive guitar pickup, right? there are some active guitar pickups. What's a pickup? Pickup is uh, about the size of this a device, maybe smaller, that is on the guitar right beside strings, and it picks up the vibrations of the string strings and it sends it uh, it makes it turns it into electronic signal right? electric signals microphone it would be the uh, for example um, dynamic microphone which would just have a, a, a membrane and that membrane connects to a coil that shifts back and forth around a core a magnetic core and that is going to, uh, because a coil, if it's, if it's uh, uh, moving around mag a magnet, it's going to create, um, it's going to create a, um, electronic vibrations that would be proportional to the sound that we're making with our mouth. So that's how microphone works. But the dynamic microphones, usually they are passive devices, which means we are not plugging them in. We're not, those are not powered devices or not active devices. So active or passive device. Active device is something that needs power, either from the uh, plug, uh, power supply, or from a battery, in order to make the circuitry work and produce a signal that could be a line level strong signal. Right? Passive devices are devices that are not powered with anything. They're just standing on their own. You have a micro dynamic microphone. You speak to it. You make the, vib uh, the membrane vibrate. The membrane vibrating uh, the coil around the magnetic core, it is going to create some sort of electricity in that coil, which could be transferred into the um, uh, mixing board preamplifier for further processing. Okay, but those are weaker signals. The uh, the uh, so that will be line level active devices. Uh, active devices such as keyboard, anything else, right, that you, you, that you plug in. Now, when it comes to passive, passive devices such as dynamic microphone, all right? 
uh, then the signal is much smaller it, and it would be instead of one volt peak to peak uh, we're going to deal with something like one millivolt peak to peak so it's a thousand times less mm -hmm. what do we do if we send this thing over unbalanced uh, cable then if we run 100 feet any kind of a noise that that wire picks up along the way and the noise could be from any kind of magnetic interference um, or if there's any kind of spikes somebody some air conditioning device turns on uh, you're gonna hear a you know click you know and stuff like that so we are not uh, that we, we're not going to like that kind of stuff so um, instead of an unbalanced signal which consists of uh, uh, you know, uh, let's say uh, hot and neutral connections just two wires so this will be unbalanced uh, just go attenuation that we just uh, talked about so this will be unbalanced right unbalanced signal right here okay now let's see uh, if we can talk about a balanced signal All right, can we see it signal all right well there is a way of uh, of, uh, of 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 dealing with this challenge all right now when you have to, now we need three conductors instead of two conductors all right two we need three conductors and uh, we have the ground reference or a neutral i'm just going to call it neutral right. and we need the positive and negative part of the signal. So, if you have a microphone that uh, has, it's a, this will, this will be the three prong microphone. So, if there's a microphone here, uh, and on the other side, you're going to see three prongs, just like that. And these will be the, they call XLR, right? Now, Google that and tell me what that means, XLR. But this is, this is the, uh, these are the three prongs, and they correspond to those three num three wires. Now, the way that it comes from the microphone is that the one on the positive side and the negative side, the signal is going to be like that. All right. And on the negative side, it's just going to be just the opposite. Right. I'm trying to draw it. Just a mirror image of that. Now that signal is being sent to something that's called a differential amplifier. And what a differential amplifier does is it is going to look at the signal and if the signal comes in 180 degrees out of phase, which is basically the opposite of it, then it's going to treat it as a signal. It's going to recognize it as a signal, and it's going to pass the signal along for further pro, uh, uh, for further processing. Look what happened now. If anything comes in in phase on those two wires, the signal is going to be ignored. So, if there is a spike somewhere along the way in the cable, of course that spike is going to be in phase in both instances here. And remember what we said, if it comes in phase, it's going to be ignored. So that spike, even if it's going to be there, it's going to be ignored. So it's not going to be passed on for further processing. Just the signal that is out of phase, which is what we want. If there is any noise happening, it is going to be in phase in both cables. It is going to be ignored. That's why balanced signal is way quieter. To transfer on the, around the cable then the unbalanced signal and in balanced signal you can transfer through a wire over longer distances i'm talking about about 100 150 feet right you can transfer the passive signals in the range of one millivolt peak to peak 
and it's still going to be nice and quiet. Quiet as mean as free of noise, all right? Uh, and clear for the perfect uh, for the processing, all right? So you can send unbalanced. Uh, sorry, you can send passive signal one millivolt peak to peak. Or, um, uh, it's sometimes just called a microphone level, all right? So line level, mic level, line level uh, active. Uh, mic level passive devices. So that's why we use the three prongs, okay? Balanced signal, okay? Unbalanced, balanced. I, I, I hope that kind of external line return. Uh, Brody, the active pickup, the batteries, right? Yeah, the active pickup would have the uh, batteries. In the case. So some of the guitars, you have the nine volt battery, so that makes the active pickups. Uh, uh, and still some of those um, uh, are going to produce a mic level signal and uh, sometimes you can uh, switch them different guitars have different circuitries all right uh, but uh, Brody has asked external line return um, uh, would you be able to specify uh, what you're asking External line return, thank you. There we go, right? <laughs> All right, so uh, XLR. When you see those uh, uh, those uh, three prong, uh, do I have one here somewhere? Actually, I do. Now, let me just grab that. Somebody has their mic turned on and I can hear their mouth noises. All right. So let's see if I can, uh, oh, there's my wiping cloth for the screen. See if I can turn on my uh, side camera here, desktop camera. Just give me a sec here. There we go. Sure if it if it wants to work or not. Do we have it? All right here. There we go. Here we have our side camera here. I'm gonna get some side lights going on. Focus. All right. So here is an example of a. Uh, XLR microphone, all right? That's what it looks like. All right. Here is the male XLR connection. Here's the female XLR connection, all right? That's what the inputs on the mixing board have. That's what the outputs on the uh, uh, whatever instruments uh, or maybe the output of the mixing board, you would have the three prongs. All right, so basically that's, it's considered to be a microphone cable. All right, XLR, All right. and it does have, it does have three cables, three conductors, three wires inside, three cables, you know that? Okay. There's a ground, there's a positive, there's a negative. Maybe if we have enough time in the classroom, maybe I can uh, hook, uh, connect the uh, microphone into an oscilloscope and see how those how the signals are out of phase. All right, so that's the... Uh, uh, for years I thought it was exclusive left and right. Yeah. Well... I uh, have installed those a lot for years and I never never bothered to check what XLR but now I'm teaching it so I should probably uh, give you that little bit uh, of information that uh, 
that would be uh, something that you, know, you can say, you know, if somebody asks you what XLR is, then you can just say. But that's basically what it is. It's for balanced signals. Okay, I'm just going to turn the light off. Um, all right. So we're going to go back to our uh, main screen here. So this uh, stage box on the stage uh, would have a bunch of XLR inputs that will be connected to single conductors on the conductors, the um, cables inside that big snake jacketing. And it's going to be fanned out here and plugged in. So this will be a female XLR and it will be male XLR because it's going this way. And the return, and so if, like if it's a 12 channel snake, you will have 12 of those. And maybe it says four returns. So it's going to have four uh, genders going the other way. Right? So you could uh, send the signal back to the stage box, pick it up, pick it up from the stage box and go into the... Uh, amplifiers that would be powering up the speakers. Now here's the DI box. The DI box has something that's called a quarter inch input jack. The quarter inch is just like a looks like a banana plug. Right? Um, and we will talk about that uh, later on when we talk about the phone systems. But if you have if you, if, if you play guitar, so you, actually you can if you want you can Google that what's a quarter inch jack looks like. Quarter inch jack is looks like the headphone plug but except it has a diameter of quarter inch uh, and it's just like a guitar plug all right so uh, we will talk about uh, there we go so that's a quarter inch jack and the quarter inch jacks come in unbalanced version or balanced version as well so the balanced version uh, would have three sort of sections there separated by dielectric uh, and um, um, the unbalanced would be just the most common one we just have one uh, some kind of like a sleeve version of it it's called sleeve so this is the longer part and be separated by a dielectric which is insulator and it's just going to have a tip right so it's plus and minus just like that uh, so those those quarter inch jacks or xlr this this stuff that i showed you here uh, is um, um, the one that i showed you right here all right that's an xlr type of a uh, jack or a plug, okay? And the quarter inch is, I don't have one here, do I? No, I don't. Uh, the quarter inch is just like the guitar plug, and I'm gonna show it to you next time, okay? Um, <clears throat> so the DI box, the direct box, is a box that has a quarter inch input, so you can plug your guitar in, and it has a little converting transformer inside, to turn that signal into a balanced signal, which could be sent over longer distance. Right to the mixing board. And then again, the DI boxes, direct boxes, they are passive boxes and they are active boxes as well. Right? So, <coughs> yes, can you, or actually, can you send a line level signal over XLR balance. Yes, you can. It's just going to be a stronger signal. And in the mixing board, right on the input side, you're going to have buttons to specify what kind of input. What, are you getting a hot signal, which would be the, uh, maybe let's say uh, line level, one volt peak to peak. Uh, then, uh, yeah, okay. So you're going to select, or am I going here? You're going to select the input on the on the mixing board, uh, telling the input that yeah it's a hot signal uh, line level, so treat it as such, because uh, if you have it set to a mic level signal and you put in a strong signal, it's going to sound just like my microphone in the beginning when I was adjusting it, right? <laughs> it's going to be too hot, all right? Um, so here comes the term, you know, it's, uh, how's the signal? It's coming a little too hot, all right? So that means it's, the signal is too strong, all right? Um, and uh, over in, in the mixing board here, um, I don't play the guitar, Victor says. Well, nobody's perfect, all right? <laughs> all right. Um, so uh, over here there will be uh, uh, effects uh, uh, coming in here, um, 
effects like a delay, echo, echo, <laughs> echo and delay, uh, compression limiter, compressors, limiters, uh, uh, delays, uh, reverb, anything that uh, that you need or is requested by whatever the artist is or whatever is needed by uh, by the situation. All right. So that's basically a basic uh, uh, type of a uh, signal, uh, the basic uh, basic setup. Now. The mixing boards can be analog, which would be on this case, in this case here, that we have. Or it could be digital mixing boards. With the digital mixing boards, the idea is pretty much the same, but different. How is it the same? How is it different? Well, you still have the stage box, and you still have the link connecting the stage box right with the mixing board except instead of using an analog snake consisting of multiple wires inside to accommodate the amount of wires that you need three prongs each you get a cat 5e or cat 6 cable just like the computer cable connecting that stage box with the mixing board so you don't need a heavy snake, you just need a category cable, a computer, Ethernet cable, all right? which we'll talk about uh, in the further lessons here. Right? The advantage of that is, well, <laughs> you just have one cable here. The disadvantage is that if in the snake, if one of the cables gets broken, you still have 11 of them. Or if you have 16 channel snake, you still have 15 of those. Right? And the digital here, if, this, if there is something wrong with that one cable, your whole stage is off. This is just offline. Right? If in analog, there is some wrong or bad connection, some connection becomes loose, you get a little bit annoying interference uh, on one of the channels. It could be bad, right? because it could be some buzz coming through, and it's, if you play music, then it's annoying. right? It's not a very constructive thing. Um, if there is some loose connection in the digital cable, yeah, then not only you get basically no connectivity between the stage box and the mixing board, uh, but you have um, something that sounds like, uh, like you're in the middle of a lightning storm. It sounds like the sky is coming down. Um, it can be damaging to the speakers. It can be pretty much damaging to anything, right? But it just, it sounds awfully loud and all of a sudden, right? So that's, uh, you know, uh, cables should be treated with utmost respect. And there are certain type of uh, motions you go through when you're wind, uh, coiling the cables for storage, right? You should have nice... Uh, nice good coil here instead of never do that elbow thing right so what uh, you know because that's twisting the cable too much right uh, so that's the now when it comes to digital mixing boards versus analog mixing boards the other advantage of the digital mixing boards is that besides them being more expensive so yeah, you can feel it if you uh, spend more money that it must be better right <laughs> Right. Well, there's a reason for that, right? Because um, well, digital technology is still a little bit more expensive than analog technology. Uh, but the the digital mixing boards. I'm just going to sort of here. Let's see. Uh, page down. Page down. Page down. Here, here's an example of a digital mixing board. It doesn't have so many sliders. This could be like a 48 mixing, 48 channel mixing board. Yeah, I'm looking at the chat lines here. Yes, uh, this the, the, in this that's, that's why I said in schedule it is set for sections one, three, and five, right? Uh, but everyone is welcome because this is for for all the sections and I'm going to put it on YouTube so all the sections can watch this uh, this presentation here right uh, so this is an example of a digital board all right what's that digital board here Yamaha CN5 CL5 
digital mixing board very popular mixing board what would be the diff what would be the i'm going to talk about the advantages of the digital well there must be more advantages than disadvantages for the digital because the whole world is going that way uh, well here you have the screen for example and the screen displays uh the channels that you have selected to control and here you have the sliders so you could have 48 channels or 50 channels or 500 channels not really but a lot of channels and you're displaying the channels that you're going to control by the sliders and you can change the screens on which channels this could be displaying channels uh, 1 through 8 and then uh, 9 through 16 and so on and you're going to use those sliders and once you switch those sliders automatically are going to adjust to whatever the settings that you have left all right now the uh, with all this digital mixing board you can uh, do a sound check uh, if you are traveling on the road with the specific band and you do a, a sound check for all the instruments and all the artists and all that stuff and you set up the effects for the microphones and whatnot you can save it as a file and you can put that whole setup on a jump drive and if you're traveling with the band if it's a more serious band then you can request that this mixing board is installed when you come over there and you just come over with your jump drive, plug it in, and your sound check is done. Then instead of doing a two-hour sound check to adjust everything in the big, since beginning, if you had the uh, from scratch, if you have the analog board, you can just do a little kind of a tweaking just to accommodate the differences in the acoustics of their specific room. Right? So that's the advantage of that. So you can have the whole show uh, right on your jump drive. Right? Um, also. If you have an analog board, all the effects, um, and most of the time would be compressors, limiters, uh, reverbs, uh, and whatever else, voice effects, or you have to purchase a specific equipment, have it in a rack beside you, connect it physically to that analog mixing board, adjust that, and use it. Right? Now, in the digital mixing boards, you have something that's called plugins, and those effects are already built in to the mixing board. You can just use them if you wish. Again, whatever the effects that you apply to whatever channels and the levels of the effects and the way you set them up, it can all be saved as a file and put it in the in the jump drive. Uh, so this is this Yamaha CL5. That is a uh, quite popular uh, professional mixing board. There are other ones that are much less expensive for smaller venues, and they're also pretty good. But uh, I just give you the Cadillac version of that. Now, uh, uh, when I post the lecture notes, uh, you will be able to click on and, uh, and see the, all the wonderful things that this can do. It's, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you how much it is, uh, but if you here, you have the model Yamaha CL5. I think it's called Control Logic. Uh, five uh, digital mixing board uh, Google the price of that all right just to uh, see now on here we're going to take a look uh, sorry ay, 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 ay. Uh, I'm just uh, well tomorrow we're going to finish up um, on on uh, analyzing some of the mixing channels and inputs and the outputs uh, based on the analog system and the digital is the same, except it's all built in and uh, pretty much any time you want to uh, use any kind of equipment, you still have to learn. Uh, so you have to read the manual. And for that CL5, there they go, $27,000. Is that American or Canadian for that mixing board? Uh, so when, uh, no clue, yeah. So it uh, you know, sounds about right. Uh, it used to be more uh, a few years ago. It looks like the price is coming down, but still. <coughs> excuse me, $27,000, uh, $28,000 um, is quite a, you know, so whenever you buy that thing, you, you're serious about doing the sound systems, right? Now, uh, tomorrow, what we're going to do, um, what's the, I don't have my phone, because uh, that's where my schedule is, in my jacket. Uh, I'm going to set up this uh, tomorrow's we're going to finish up on this on the PA systems I'm going to right after this I'm going to post the lecture notes uh, so you could uh, no there's no lab this week there's no labs there's no in-person labs 
uh, we're starting next week and I am going to tomorrow um, also uh, give you a bit of a rundown on the um, lab that is going to be lab two um, that, uh, that you're going to perform next week and next week is going to be in person right and it's going to be a PA system uh, distributed audio we're going to connect a bunch of speakers so we're going to analyze the mixing boards and some of the microphones uh, next uh, time we see each other which is tomorrow and I'm going to give you a quick rundown on uh, the um, on the lab okay any uh, are we meeting online instead? Nope, we're not. Uh, the, the, the lab that you have is, I'm going to say it again. Where is that? Here. Here is our YouTube playlist. Watch this video. Watch the other video, but start from... Uh, one minute and one hour and 15 all right see here one hour 15 somewhere 18 17 somewhere here okay uh, that's when I'm talking about the lab and some of us already have submitted the labs so here is the and that's going to be a few minutes of that all right all the other stuff is just talking about how this course is structured you might watch it if you want, uh, just to know what's what. But if you don't, that's okay. You're just going to go through it anyways, right? um, as we come to, uh, to, our, to our classes. All right? So watch that. So here's the first video. Here's the second video. Right? And this is already being populated, this list, with, uh, uh, with the um, um, content that we're doing. Also, I put another video here yesterday. It's a three-minute video on how to submit your work all right so all the information is there uh yeah so no labs in person this week that's what you're supposed to do watch these three videos submit the work the deadline is sunday night midnight one minute before midnight and then uh, you can still submit it, but you're going to get you're going to get hit with the late marks if you submit it later, right? Uh, I wasn't introduced to the PA systems on Monday. On Monday we didn't. Uh, yeah, see all the here's our YouTube list. Okay, now I'm just going to close that. Here's our class portal. That's the main page of our class or our, our course. And if you scroll down this, here's the, as soon as you click on that, you're going to get announcements. Like this is the lecture today. Lab do, right? Our YouTube playlist. Look at that. I'm going to leave that all through the way through the course. You click on that. You are going to get right. It's going to take you right to our playlist. And we're populating today's class after we are done about 15 18 minutes after that it's going to be on youtube right? so we're just going to keep adding it and you're going to see also the instructional videos for pretty much every single lab that you're going to, to use and you're gonna have to watch that right uh okay but it was okay i thought it was yesterday's lecture for the other sections yeah so as i explained uh it's okay um um because we have that online convenience, I'm going to structure things a little bit differently than if it was in person. If it was in person, I would just uh, have to repeat part one for sections uh, one, three, and five. Part one for sections two, four, and six. I'll have to do the same lesson twice, which I will be able to do, but sometimes I'm not going to give you, be able to give you as much as I want to, which we can right now, and I'll just have to talk a lot faster. Uh, but right now we have four classes, four hours, so we could split that uh, the whole thing over the four hours. You can, you're welcome to join me in kind of live viewing session, and if you're not, you can still watch it at a double speed if you want uh, later on at your convenience. Just log into that YouTube channel. 
if we go back to in person after january 17th i don't know how it's going to be then we're going to have to uh, uh, tackle it in a different way right it's going to be in person class <laughs> all right <laughs> okay guys um i will see you tomorrow whenever the class is scheduled i'm still trying to remember my schedule here right? cool i'll see you tomorrow and that's it for today